Now, so far we created a great backdoor that allow us to interactively execute commands on a remote computer and see the result. We built the backdoor from scratch using Python and using sockets, but when it came to listening for incoming connections, we used a tool called Netcat to listen for incoming connections. Now, from the previous lectures, you've seen that the tool is working perfectly and it's allowing us to send the commands and receive the output properly, but it would make sense to show you how to write your own listener since this is a programming course. Also, by showing you how to do this, you'll have the full package of being able to establish a connection between two computers so that you have a server and a client and that they'll be able to communicate with each other and transfer data between each other. Now, there are more advantages of creating your own listener. If you go ahead and test the backdoor that we created so far, you'll see that the CD command doesn't work properly. It doesn't allow you to go to a different directory. So I also want to implement uh, an, an upload and a download command so that we can upload files to the target computer and download files from there. And that'll be much easier and it'll make more sense if we do it using our own listener. So in this lecture, I'm gonna show you how to create our own listener, and then we'll talk about adding more features to our backdoor in the future lectures. So first of all, I'm gonna to go to PyCharm, and you can see that I already created a new project called Reverse Backdoor, and I already have a file called Listener, because this is going to be the file that we're gonna to use to listen for incoming connections. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is import socket, which is the library that we use to create the connection, and it's the same library that we're gonna use to listen for incoming connections. The next thing that we need to do is create a socket object. So again, this is going to be identical to what we did in the backdoor. In the backdoor, I called it connection, but this time I'm gonna call it listener. And we're gonna make that equal to socket dot socket. And we'll pass first of all the family, which is gonna be socket dot net and the socket type. And this is going to be socket dot sock stream. Now again, this is identical to what we did when we were building our backdoor, identical to this line. And basically this will create my socket for me. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is change an option in my socket object, in my listener. So this is gonna be an example of changing any option that you want. To do that, first of all, we're gonna type the name of the variable that's holding the socket object. Then the method that we can use to change any option is set sock opt, which is short for set sock option. And what we want to modify is the socket dot sol socket. And the option that we want to modify is the socket dot so reuse adder, which is a short for address. And we want to set the value of this to one. So basically what I'm trying to do is to enable an option that will allow us to reuse sockets. So in case the connection drops or we lose connection, then the socket that we created can be reused to establish a new connection. So to do that, we're calling the socket object. We're calling a method called set sock opt to set a socket option. We're specifying the level. We're specifying the attribute or the option that we want to modify. And finally, we're setting that to one, which means enable this option. Now, the next thing that we usually do is connect. But this time, we actually don't want to connect. We want to listen for incoming connections. So if we go back to our diagram, we want to create something like this socket so that we are waiting for incoming connections. To do that, we're gonna say the name of my object, which is listener, and we want to bind 
And in here, first of all, we're gonna specify the IP which we want to bind to. This is going to be my local IP on my Kali machine. Again, we're creating a socket that's gonna wait for incoming connections on our local machine. So it's gonna be 10.0.2.16. You can get that using ifconfig. And the next argument is gonna be the port, which is gonna be 4444. Again, you can use any port you want as long as it's not already being used by your system. And this is bind, not bing. Now, once done with this, we're going to say listener dot listen so that we can listen for incoming connections. And we need to specify a backlog to this method. Basically, a backlog is the number of connections that can be queued before the system starts refusing connections. Now, this is not very important right now. I'm going to set this to zero. And basically, right now, if we execute our code, this will create something similar to the socket that's going to bind on my computer and listen for incoming connections on the port that we specified in here. Now, we also need to tell my computer to accept connections that come to this port. And to do that, we're going to say listener dot accept. And that's it. So let's have a quick look on our code. And if you think of it, it's actually very, very simple. First of all, we're creating a socket object exactly like we did before. The only difference is we're calling it listener this time instead of connection. Then we're modifying an option so that we can reuse sockets. Then instead of connecting to a destination, we're actually binding our socket to our computer so that we listen for incoming connections on port 4444. We're setting the number of connections that can be queued before connections start getting refused. And then we're saying that if you get a connection, I want you to accept it. Now, once a connection is accepted, let's print got a connection. And before we get a connection, before anything gets accepted, let's print waiting for incoming connections. Okay, and let's go ahead and test our code. So I'm already in my working directory and I'm just going to do python listener.py. As you can see, it's telling us that it is waiting for incoming connections. So basically we're at this line right here and we proceeded to this line and basically this line pulls the program and it's waiting for a connection to come before executing any code that comes after this. Hence, we still didn't see this print message right here. Now, if I go to the Windows machine, and run my backdoor. Now I'm actually going to remove this line which sends connection established because we're printing that in the listener. And I'm just gonna go and run the backdoor as usual. And if we go here, you'll see that the next line got executed and it's telling us that we got a connection. So we basically proceeded to this line and then our program quit because we don't have anything in here. But basically, right now we're able to create a listener that can listen on a specific port and receive a connection. Now in the next lecture, we'll see how we can write code so that we can communicate with our backdoor, send it commands and receive responses.